Ah, much better. So for about a year now, I've been running this phone as a daily driver. It's just a Motorola G Power 2024 that was contracted for my provider. And as far as I know, there are no custom Android ROMs that support it. This is a big problem for me because I want to avoid all the garbage that comes pre-installed on the phone because all I want is a phone with a simple, minimal Android system that allows me to do whatever I want with it. So instead of a custom Android ROM, I found a way to modify my default Android install to remove most of the Google services off of it as you see here. And in this video, I will show you how you can replicate this on almost any other Android device. Now, this is an important disclaimer. I highly recommend that you watch through this entire video before you even begin degooling your phone like this. If you're not careful, you could send your phone into a perpetual boot loop and your device is unrecoverable. I've learned this the hard way. But with that disclaimer out of the way, let me show you how I did this. Let me introduce you to a project called Universal Android Bloater, and I'll call it UAD for short. It's a program that you run on your PC, and it remotely deletes apps on your phone when you plug it into your desktop through a USB cable. But this project hasn't been maintained since July of 2022. And that's what I would say if there wasn't a new group of maintainers that picked up the project. This newly maintained version is called Universal Android Bloater Next Generation, and this is what I'll be using to delete all the apps on my phone. The second piece of software I'm using is called Obtainium, and it is an app that you install on your phone, and I am using it to install a list of app alternatives after I degoogled my system. So an overview of what I'm about to do is I use UAD to delete almost everything, then I use Obtainium to install my needed apps to bring back my phone's functionality. Hopefully that made sense, and I'll show you how you can replicate this on your phone. So I've broken down the setup in two stages. You'll need to set up your PC with the required software, and you need to set up your phone. So to set up your PC, you will need to download UID from the link in this video's description. Then you'll need to install something called Android Platform Tools, which is needed for UID to be able to interact with your phone. Now I'm on a Linux system and installing Android Platform Tools is pretty easy, but if you're on Windows, the process requires more steps. I won't be going into how to set up Android platform tools for Windows in this video, but the older version of UID has a list of instructions for how to set it up for Windows. You will also need a USB cable to connect your phone to your PC, but that should be pretty easy to find because you can just use your phone's charger. And lastly, you will need to download Obtanium's APK file from their website, and also my own Obtanium preset. Both of these things are linked in the video's description, but once you download these, you can ignore them for now. Now let's get into how you're going to set up your phone. The first and most important thing is make sure your phone has a way to factory reset it through its recovery mode. This is extremely important because if you don't have access to factory reset it through the recovery mode, you could brick your device forever. I cannot understate how important this feature is. Please make sure that you have access to this before you delete anything. Also, you want to make sure that you have the ability to enable USB debugging on your phone. I'm not showing you how to do this now, but I will come to it later in this video. I think I've explained enough, now let's actually get started. So the first step is to do a factory reset so that you are starting with a clean Android install. For the sake of demonstrating, I will be factory resetting through the phone's recovery instead of doing it through the settings app. To get there, I need to restart my phone, and as my phone is booting, I hold down the volume down button. This is progress, but I'm still not there yet. I now need to navigate through the options until I find recovery mode. I press the power button to select it, and then it brings me to this screen. It looks like a dead end, but when I press the power button and the volume up button at the same time, it brings me to its recovery mode. My phone has a different ritual for how to get here, so I recommend doing research on how to access the recovery on your phone. As you can see, there's an option called wipe data slash factory reset, and this is what I want to click on by pressing the power button again. Once my phone finishes its factory reset, it'll bring me to the setup process. Now I'm in the setup process and I'm at the stage where it's asking me to connect to the internet. I actually don't want to do this because when my phone connects to the internet for the first time, the Google Play Store will install a bunch of apps that I didn't ask for. So setting up the phone offline is how I avoid that. And whenever they ask you for diagnostics or your location, disable as much of these as you can. Now it's asking me for a password and the setup is complete. So for the entire process, you want to make sure that your phone stays offline or the Play Store will download things again. Now I want to go into settings and about phone. 
Once you find the build number, you want to tap this several times, and once you're finished, you're now in developer mode. This setting allows you to enable stuff that you wouldn't normally have access to, and the setting that we are looking for is called USB debugging. Once you enable it, you should be able to remove apps off your phone with UID. I'm going to connect my phone to my PC, and now let's begin deleting everything. So this is the point in the tutorial where you're a little bit on your own. I can't really tell you exactly which apps to delete, because every phone's Android install is a little bit different, but what it will show you is the different presets that are built into this program. These presets are a good starting point for deleting almost everything, but you will have to delete more on your own to figure out what you need to remove yourself. What's cool about this program is that once you're happy with what you removed, you can back up a list of everything you deleted, and you can restore your phone to exactly the way that you left it. But I'll show you how to do that once I'm done. So to start off, I'm selecting everything to be deleted inside of the recommended preset. You can even watch the apps be deleted in real time. Once that's done, click the advanced preset and delete everything in there as well. Be aware though that the advanced preset also removes your on-screen keyboard, but don't worry because we will install a replacement keyboard afterwards. This has removed a lot, but there's still much more to remove before I'm satisfied. My ultimate goal is to get to the point where the only thing that is left is the settings app. To search for more apps that aren't listed in these presets, go to the all removals preset. You want to be very careful when going through this preset though, because this includes everything that UID can find, including apps that will break your phone if they're removed. If you want more Google services deleted, search for GSF, then GMS. Be aware though that deleting GMS will likely cause your device to boot loop if you restart, because that's what it does with mine, but some phones can run without it. But if you can't remove GMS, then the next thing is to disable it. If you go into settings, apps, and find Google Play services, you can disable it and force stop it for good measure. Disabling GMS may also cause some apps to send you several notifications telling you to re-enable GMS, but you can delete those apps as well to make those notifications stop. One app that kept bothering me about GMS was Sim Manager, so I removed that as well by searching for EUYCC. I had to find the name of this app through a lot of trial and error, and you'll likely have to do the same if you want a similar setup. And lastly, to remove the Play Store, you search for com.android.vending, and once that's deleted, that results in a degoogled system that is pretty close to what I'm looking for. There are a few more apps that I removed after this that I won't cover, but there's some footage of me deleting them individually. Once you are satisfied with everything that you removed, you can now go into the settings of UAD and back up the state of your phone, and at any point, you can restore your phone back to the way it was. It's cool that you can de-bloat your Android system to this extent, but it's useful if your only hobby is looking at the settings menu. So the second part of this process is to install some new apps through Obtanium. If you have the Obtanium APK and my preset downloaded, we will be putting these two files in your phone. To do this, I'm plugging my phone back into my PC and I will temporarily restore the files application so that I am able to navigate to the two files that I want to put into the phone. Next, when I plug in my phone again, I want to put it in file transfer mode so that I can directly put the two files inside my phone's storage through the USB connection. Now, once those files transferred, navigate to those files in your phone and install Obtanium. Once you do that, open Obtanium and have it use the preset. This is what I consider some good app replacements, but if you want to, you can add or remove anything that you want. The next step is to simply wait for everything to download and install by itself, and just like that, you have replicated my Android system. And there you have it. You'll likely need to adjust your taste or add files back into your phone that you backed up, but that's pretty much it. Before I end this video, I do want to explain the pros and cons of doing this on your phone, so that you can decide for yourself if doing this is right for you. Let me go into the benefits first. The first thing is that you will have better security. The UAD developers themselves say that doing this can improve security, but it can't fully eliminate the attack surface. The second benefit is battery life. No joke, I've managed to get one week of battery life, admittedly with very little screen time. But even if the phone was in sleep mode, with all the apps that it would have on it, the battery life would be far worse than it would be otherwise. 
The third benefit is improved privacy. I know it makes me sound like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no secret that Google, along with the other apps that come installed on phones, are fighting for your data. And lastly, this setup can be replicated on nearly any Android device. As long as you can enable USB debugging and UID can recognize your device, you can do this on nearly anything. But it all depends on if you should do this, which leads me into the cons. The biggest problem I've run into is unreliable updates. The worst thing that was caused by this was my mobile data stopped working. So the only thing I could do to fix this was to back up all my data, do another factory reset, and then start all over. This is going to be a deal breaker for most of you because everyone wants a phone that will just work. But I did go through three security updates and even a major Android version upgrade and nothing broke. So it all depends on what is being updated and there's no way of telling when something will break until you actually do the update. And the second con is that it takes quite a lot of work to set up. Factory resetting alone takes a lot of preparation because you want to back up all your important data first. But on top of that, you need to do some trial and error to find out what you can and can't delete off your phone. And third, if your phone supports having a custom Android ROM installed, you're likely way better off installing those instead. The custom ROMs will have updates that are tested and a system that is built to be minimal, so you will have a better, more stable experience if you did that instead. But if your phone isn't supported by ROMs, like this one, and you have very basic needs like I do, then this could be a perfect setup. Thanks to UID, it makes this low-tier phone feel like a flagship. But that's everything I have to say for this video, and thanks for watching. Thank you.